Hi, I'm Kevin. Some of you may have seen the little cloth testing I did the other day. Um, I've seen a lot of people ask about how to pin certain parts of the cloth down and things like that. So let's talk a little bit about weight maps today. So let's first look at the notch manual. Um, in our scenario, we're mostly going to be using weight maps on deformers. Essentially what a weight map is, is it just tells the object where you want it to be affected, like this star here and where you don't want it to have any effect like the rest of the sphere. So I'm not going to open this example project, but feel free to check it out. Um, essentially what they're doing is there's a plane deformer that is utilizing the star-shaped weight map to only affect this pattern here on the sphere. Um, without a weight map generated, it would be pretty hard to do this otherwise. Um, otherwise, you'd have to jump into like a 3D modeling software or something to get this done. So similarly, we can use a technique like this to pin down edges of a cloth, essentially you would have a weight map affect certain portions of your mesh where you want the cloth effector to do something and then where you don't want it to do something. So in this example, we're basically using the notch logo to tell it, don't do anything here. And then using the rest of it to deform kind of like a cloth texture. So right here, I've got my generate weight map node. Um, if you go into it, you can basically show the weight map so you can get a better idea of how the program is actually processing it. Um, so let's go ahead and make this from scratch. I'm going to jump to a new layer here and get started. Let's go ahead and name this something. Testing. So although this is the first tutorial that I'm doing, I'm not going to go too much over keyboard shortcuts here. I'll probably point out a thing or two, but most I'm going to focus on weight maps. So let's start with a plane. Um, let's use a shape 3D node. Well, instead of sphere, let's go ahead and change this to a plane. Um, because we're doing cloth deformation, any, any sort of deformation, you're going to need to add some subdivisions here, right? So I'm going to just go crazy from the start, 300 by 300. Um, if you want to double check that, you can always look at the wireframe here. Make this a little larger. And you can see how many subdivisions there are here. So quite a few. This will be a good starting point for us. So to make a cloth, or let's see. Before we jump into cloths, let's first look at weight maps so you can get a better handle of how that works. Um, we're going to go ahead and first use a plane deformer just to demonstrate how this works. So we're going to have this plane deformer essentially deform the plane in the Y. Right now, because there's no fall off, it's affecting the entire plane, similar to you know just moving it in the Y. So we can use weight maps to tell it only affects certain portions, right? So let's look at how we do that. First, you're going to want to add a generate weight map deformer. Um, we'll also hook that into your plane here. The thing to note is the order in which you have your deformers has a big impact. So you want to generate the weight map first before you do any sort of deformation. So right now, you'll notice it's it's not really doing anything because the weight map doesn't have any info to use. In order for weight maps to work, you have to give it an image of some sort. So let's go ahead and make a gradient. You know, we'll pin down one side of this item. So I'm going to use a gradient node and feeding into it, I'm going to give it a color ramp. And all I'm going to define in the color ramp is just a black to white gradient. So if you want to, you know, visualize what your gradient looks like as you're editing it, go ahead and check this preview and viewport. You can also hit control F1 to activate it. So right now we have black in the center and white on the edges. I'm going to change this to a linear clamped just so it goes from white to black and we can see what happens here. Um, so I'm going to deactivate this preview and I'm going to now feed this into the image input on your generate weight map deformer. So right now you'll notice that nothing has happened because we need to actually feed this weight map deformer into your plane deformer. There's an input here that says generated weight map. And so this plane deformer needs to know to be, to, to listen to what this generate weight map is telling it to do. So let's see. Ah, so <laughs> nothing's still happening because your generate weight map needs to change from fall off only here in the mode to texture. So we need to tell it to actually look at this texture and look at that. We got something going on here. So 
what's happening if we look at our gradient node again is the white area is essentially telling it have a big impact, right? Our plane deformer has full effect here on this edge. And the black area of this says don't do anything, hence why this area here is not being deformed at all by our plane deformer. We can toggle this to see kind of the effect it's having. Um, one thing you'll notice is this edge is kind of screwed up here. The reason for that is in your generate weight map deformer, the default is to wrap your texture on the U and the V. So essentially this texture is being wrapped on this edge here. If you don't want it to do that, just change this to clamp. And you'll notice that went away. So beautiful. Um, as we change our gradient, we should see the effect that it has on this deformer also vary. So in essence, that's what a weight map does. If you know you want to see something more interesting, um, one of the assets I've included is this notch icon. Let's go ahead and load this up and see what happens. So now you'll notice, right, we're getting a deformation in the shape of this notch icon. Um, you'll notice that right now the icon itself is not being affected, whereas the areas that are not the notch icon are being pushed up by this plane deformer. Pretty cool. So weight maps are really powerful and they're a great way to have an effect that doesn't necessarily follow your standard fall off shape, but is more of a custom, for instance, logo or other sort of patterns. So similarly, you could, you know, feed in a checkerboard or noise functions. Um, you know, you're, you can let your imagination really go wild there. So let's do this with a cloth now and start to approach the effect that we got earlier here, where we have essentially a weight map in the shape of this logo that's telling the cloth to not do anything. And then the rest of it where the cloth is kind of falling and waving in the wind. So I'm going to turn off the wireframe and it's a little hard to see. So we're going to add some lighting to this scene. And just a reminder for lighting to work, you're going to have to turn on the deferred rendering node. So you notice right now we can see through this, it's because this material is front side only, that's just by default. So let's go ahead and add a material and make it double sided. There we go. So, you know, we have a little bit of lighting. Um, if you want to get fancy, we can turn on some shadows here. This is pretty nice to visualize for now. Um, you'll notice there's a little bit of you know, kind of jagged edges occurring. This is essentially because of the shape of the mesh and um, certain contours of your image here that you're using to make your weight map don't line up with your mesh. So you'll notice this edge that does line up looks perfect, whereas these edges that don't align, you get a little bit of aliasing on it. So if you want, you know, right, right off the bat, we can solve that with a smoothing deformer. So again, pay attention to your order. Uh, your smoothing deformer should come last after you've already done your other types of deformation so that it can smooth it out at the end. Um, if you want it to get even smoother, you can just add more iterations here. Let's say five, and it's already looking quite a bit better. Um, we're not gonna worry too much about that now. You can obviously optimize that. Let's go ahead and make a cloth action. So to do a cloth, um, it's not actually called a cloth deformer. It's called a particle mesh deformer. So we're going to add one of these here. I'm going to turn off my plane deformer and we're going to use this particle mesh deformer instead. Um, you'll notice that, you know, nothing happens if you hit play. It's because this particle mesh deformer acts in a sense like a particle root. You're not going to render any particles, but you can use the particle effectors in the same way that you would affect particles. Um, I think a good way to think about this is it essentially places particles for every point in your shape 3D or your geometry. And it allows you to affect those points as if they were particles. Um, that's kind of the fundamentals of getting a cloth look. So if we go into the particles, we'll add 
you know, for fun, let's just add a curl noise effector. And you'll see immediately it starts having an effect. It's a little crazy, so, you know, let's turn down this noise size a little bit. To restart, you'll see it's having very slight effects. Pretty cool. It's already starting to look like a cloth. Um, so let's revisit this generate weight map deformer, right? If we feed this into your particle mesh deformer to this generated weight map input, similar to your plane deformer, you'll notice that nothing happens. Um, it's because generated weight map only works when you first start playing a layer. So in order to see it take effect, you'll have to restart the layer. A good shortcut for that is just the home key. So if I hit home, you'll notice already we're getting something where our weight map is telling our cloth not to behave in a certain area, but to behave in other areas. And, you know, for the users who are asking how to pin something down, you could easily swap this notch logo out with, say, the ring of a square. So if we do that real quick, um, one of these other assets, square outline, and we restart, you'll notice that now the edge of your cloth is pinned down, so to speak. And you can obviously change, you know, the sort of texture that you're feeding in. This is the square outline to get, you know, a thinner border or a wider border or add some variance, things like that. Um, so, you know, let just for giggles, let's take a look at what happens when we don't generate a weight map and we hit play. You notice that the edges aren't pinned, and if you let this play for long enough, your cloth will kind of get into crazy orientations. And it, although cool, it may not meet what you need for a project. Like if you need to make a flag waving in the wind or something like that, you know, if we add a bit of turbulence, your cloth quickly loses its shape as your simulation runs out in time. So the weight maps are a really powerful way to just secure it and keep it stable. And, you know, in, in that sense, it, it's really powerful, too, because you can easily produce, say, a logo animation. Um, if I reload our notch logo here, where, you know, you have a cloth draping on. So right now we have curl and turbulence going on. If we turn that off and add something that gives a little gravity, you know, like a physics simulation, I'm going to add this, whoa, this SPH effector there. And so if I restart this, you'll see that it kind of falls away right now, but it lacks that sort of cloth behavior. And to get that, there's actually a cloth effector in your particle effector types. So if we add this node, um, we are able to define certain cloth parameters like stiffness, you know, so you could play with that. There's a dampening factor, average edge length and solver iterations. So if we start over and play this as is, it should already feel much more like a cloth. You'll notice it's a little watery or taffy-like, a little bouncy. So, you know, let's add a little bit of dampening here. Um, that should help, you know, smooth out some of this motion. Also, you have settings in your particle mesh deformer. Um, you know, you have physics velocity dampening, so we can add some of that and it'll slow down your cloth movement, basically. Um, your fixed update rate is also very useful, I think. Uh, what happens is instead of having this update rate that fluctuates, it fixes it and makes it consistent. So right now the default is 10, which is quite quick. Larger numbers actually go, uh, force the simulation to run more slowly. So if we enter a number like 30, for instance, your class should behave in a much more organic manner. So if we restart the simulation, you'll see that it's already starting to look a lot more like cloth. I mean, the difference between this and the thing I showed you in the beginning is really just some lighting and materials, which we can go through in a moment and have some fun with. Um, you know, you can also change your terminal velocity here to slow, to make sure, this basically sets your max speed of any cloth movement. So the default is quite high to allow for, you know, a high ceiling, you could say. So if we change this to one, it'll kind of limit how fast our cloth can move. Similarly, you know, you can add some motion smoothing to just try to smooth anything out. When you think of cloth, you think of something that's really smooth and fluid. So any elements you can add here to smooth it out would help. Um, you also have this checkbox for apply after subdivision. I like to turn this on and I find that it basically applies the cloth after subdividing your mesh a little bit. That's, that's as far as I understand and I think it comes out looking a little more natural. So right now, this cloth has this really cool sort of falling effect. If I switch this notch logo out, for instance, with your square outline, 
it'll kind of have the same behavior where the edges are fixed so the middle falls in and basically produces this kind of crazy cloth uh, like trampoline or bag type deal. So let's switch back to the notch logo. And you know you can add some wind for instance to make it look like it's waving a bit. This turbulence might be a little bit strong. So I'll tone that back. And now we can mess with some materials and lighting and you know make this look a little bit better. So Right off the bat, I would look into some three-point lighting. Um, you know, we'll give this light a color. I'll copy paste it or control D to duplicate, really handy. Control R to link to root. And then I'm gonna use the same null, so it's just centered to target all these lights. So this light, I'm gonna move to the right over here and I'm gonna make it say like a blue color. Um, they're also a little too bright right now, so I'm going to tone back this brightness here much better. And let's add one more. Make this one maybe like a dimmer pink. There we go. So it's a little shiny for cloth. Let's jump into our material here and mess with that a little bit. So in our material, um, let's add a little bit more roughness. I'm also gonna increase the specularity a little bit. And that's not looking bad actually. I might tone back the brightness of these guys a little bit more. But there you have it. It's looking pretty good. And if we look at our weight maps again, which is what this was all about, you'll see that this shows where your deformers are going to behave and where they are not. Just remember to you know link your weight map into the inputs of any deformers you want it to affect. Um, so that's that. Uh, enjoy experimenting with weight maps and cloth, and I look forward to seeing really cool things that you guys make. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what else you guys want to see.